Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for January 22nd, 2016. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to talk about backdoors. We're also going to talk about privilege escalation vulnerabilities in both Linux and Windows. And we're going to talk about apples, just giving your cookies away to everybody. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Contact consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com today. And by Cyberry.it, get the latest hacking and security training for free from www.cyberry.it. All right, let's talk about some backdoors. Uh, seems to be the topic on everyone's mind the last month or so. You know, there's been a few firewalls and a couple of routers, you know, with backdoor accounts that would let you in. Um, so, why don't I add another one to that mix? Here we go. Uh, so, AMX is a company that uh, creates audiovisual equipment. Specifically, uh, they build control equipment uh, that is actually used by both the US Army and the White House. Kind of interesting. Um, they, well, there's a backdoor account, first of all, as the, the title of the slide might indicate. Um, so AMX, the company, states that this account, which also went by the name of Black Widow, which is like awesome backdoor account name, right, um, was only for maintenance purposes. So, you know, if you needed help from AMX, they could use the Black Widow account to uh, help you out. They could just, you know, remote right in. Um, so something about this account. Uh, they found, the researchers found that it was indeed a hard-coded password in the device. So as anyone who has ever looked into reverse engineering at all, um, you probably know that uh, it's pretty easy to go and find that, that kind of thing on a hardware device. You go get the firmware, start reverse engineering it with Benwalk, and hey, what do you know? Password field for the Black Widow account, there it is. Um, so, you know, the implication there is that, you know, you, you find it for this device and now you can go access anyone else's device that has or that has the same device um, as the Black Widow account. Um, so what, what did the account actually let you do? Um, well, it allowed you to perform pack capture, which is kind of cool. Um, so like the, the interface that you could log into is actually, it's a web interface uh, that, um, you know, it's, it's most likely used on, or this, the, this particular device is most likely used on an, like an internal network probably. Um, Shodan does indicate that there are some on the internet though. Uh, so, I mean, the risk is a little low there, as, as long as you don't put it on the internet somewhere. Um, you know, but still, as an internal hardware device, you, you run the risk of somebody finding this device and remoting into it, running packet capture, finding all kinds of awesome things. Um, the company has since removed it. Uh, so if you go and patch your, your AMX device, you won't have a Black Widow account anymore. And nobody will be able to run packet captures on your AMX device. Next up, Linux kernel vulnerabilities. So anyone, uh, mainly pen testers, hopefully, uh, that's ever gone through the diff or through the uh, the process of trying to escalate privileges on a Unix box or, or Linux for that matter, um, you know the the struggle it can be. You know, I mean, you, you typically look for kernel vulnerabilities, other vulnerabilities and processes, uh, you know, different uh, user config settings that you might be able to exploit. Um, so this is this particular vulnerability is a kernel uh, flaw that uh, it affects Linux kernel version 3.8 and greater. So um, anything up, up above uh, Linux kernel 3.8. Um, the company that, that actually found this particular vulnerability says that tens of millions of Linux PCs and uh, servers are vulnerable, and also 66% of Android devices. Now, Google immediately came out and said, uh, yeah, that, we're pretty sure that that's a very, very inaccurate number. Um, but either way, we're going to create a patch for it. Google's patch will be out in March, um, which, by the way, so like this this particular attack, I should probably talk about that a bit. Um, it would allow a standard user on a Linux box, somebody who does not who's not root at all, to gain root privileges. Um, so you know, with the the fear that Android is also vulnerable, is that you know potentially a third party application might be able to get root privileges through this vulnerability um, very quickly. I mean. Yes, yes, of course, there's the risk on your desktops, too, um, but uh, pretty much all the main Linux flavors have all already patched this. Uh, but, you know, with the, the Android devices, uh, patches tend to come out a little bit slower. And case in point, Google's not patching it until March. Um, so go ahead and just patch your systems. Um, if, you, if you have uh, an Android device, um, Google says that you're probably not too vulnerable yet, um, but I don't think there's been uh, any... Uh, any third-party applications that have been proof of concepts anyway that can get root through this vulnerability, but uh, there definitely is proof of concept code for Linux uh, PCs and and servers. So uh, you might want to go patch that immediately. Go apt get update. 
now. Uh, Apple sharing your cookies. This is a fun one. Um, so there was actually a really interesting bug found in the latest iOS uh, 9.2.1 update that affects iPhones. Um, basically, the, the, the title of the, the, um, uh, the patch basically indicates that malicious captive portals could access users' cookies. Um, so I, I was reading an analysis of what this actually means, um, and what, what exactly this, this particular vulnerability or what this vulnerability was that was patched uh, is that if you are a user with an iPhone, you connect to an, an, I, or, uh, an AP, a wireless AP, and that wireless AP has a captive portal. Um, your device, your, your iPhone, typically will go try to look, at, look for Apple's website for a success message, or um, it'll get redirected to the captive portal. For some reason, um, Apple iOS devices were sending all of the users' cookies from Safari to the captive portal um, anytime you connected to that captive portal. So you as an iPhone user, let's say you were, I mean, logged into any, any service at all, really. Uh, let's, let's say Facebook or Twitter, which, you know, pretty much everyone uses the apps for those anyway. But if, let's say for some reason you logged in via Safari browser, your cookies are going to be in that browser. And if you were to have connected to any access point and hit a captive portal, uh, Safari's or your, your Apple device is going to hand over your, your authentication cookies to that portal. Um, so this opens you up to so many different attacks. I mean, if you were to connect to any public access point that passes your uh, passes you over to a captive portal, you know you run the risk there of having your entire authentication session stolen. Um, you also run the risk of having cookies set uh, through this vulnerability as well. So uh, what's even more interesting is Apple was notified about this particular vulnerability back in June of 2013. Um, and they literally just passed, patched it. Uh, so kind of an interesting long-term vulnerability there. Uh, so anyways, it's patched. Go update to 9.2.1. Um, hot potato. This is, oh, this is an awesome, awesome Windows, Windows privilege escalation uh, exploit. So this new exploit, um, it's, it's, it actually exploits a number of things that have been well known for a while. Uh, it's just in, in the way they're, they've been kind of put together that makes this so interesting. So uh, this particular privilege escalation takes advantage of NBNS issues, which I actually did a Hack Naked episode last year uh, completely dedicated to killing LLMNR and NBNS. So um, if you want to go take, that, take a look at that, do it. Um, but to give you the short version, uh, NBNS is your NetBIOS naming service. And whenever you... Uh, are on a Windows uh, Windows system, uh, they all by default will fail, fall back to NBNS if DNS fails. So, for example, if you were to look up uh, or try to connect to a system via the, its host name, and let's say that DNS does not respond to you. So let's say you, uh, for example, mistype something. Um, then your DNS server is going to say, hey, I don't have anything for that. And your host will fall back to using NBNS and ask all the hosts on the local network where that host is. So it'll say, hey, do you know where, you know, whatever I mistyped is? And occasionally, you know, if, if you have a host name that's not in DNS, I might be able to respond to it and say, hey, I'm right here. Um, so, you know, this is the attack that, that Responder uh, takes advantage of. Now, the, the thing that's been kind of difficult and, and the thing that this particular this um, exploit takes advantage of is really interesting because you don't have to be an admin. See, typically to run Responder, you have to be able to packet capture on a box. So if you can't, if you're not an admin, you can't packet capture and you can't listen for those NBNS requests to exploit. Um, so how do you how do you take advantage of an NBNS issue if you can't actually uh, packet capture? Well, if you know the host name ahead of time that the target you're trying to exploit is going to query, you can you can pre-configure uh, a, a spoofing attack for NBNS for that specific host. Now, that can be kind of difficult because, I mean, you don't know what people are going to mistype on a network, um, but they, they found that this particular vulnerability does something really, really awesome on a local host uh, in regards to Windows Update and Windows Defender. Um, so if you spoof your local host for NBNS requests um, and you are able to intercept WPAD uh, request, which WPAD is uh, Internet Explorer's uh, way of looking for a proxy. So um, if you, or it's actually for not just Internet Explorer, but any system, 
it, it's the built-in way to look for um, an internet proxy. Um, now, if you're able to spoof in VNS and you're able to create a fake, uh, a fake WPAD proxy, um, you can actually run a Windows Defender update, and the NTLM creds that are used by the by the user that is running that that uh, that update. So, uh, which Windows update and Windows Defender get run as system uh, will be passed to the proxy to carry out the function. Now, um, with cross system attacks, you can't actually convert the uh, the NTLM uh, creds to a different protocol. So. Uh, the NTLM authentication that happens whenever you run a Windows update is over HTTP. Now, the interesting thing comes whenever you can actually use it as an SMB attack. So, one thing that's really awesome is you can actually have it run commands as that user. So, you can set up this, uh, this, this exploit, which is called Hot Potato, um, to set up a fake, uh, a fake WPAD proxy, spoof in BNS requests, requests and run a Windows update, or Windows Defender update. Windows Defender then will pass the NTLM cred to, well, the NTLM hashes, to uh, the proxy. Proxy that you're spoofing, you can then take those creds and run a command as it. So the, the best example of this is, hey, create a new local admin on my system. So you literally just specify create a new local admin, run a Windows update, Windows update cred gets passed to that command, boom, new local admin on the system. So, pretty, pretty awesome privilege escalation vulnerability. That's it for this Hack Naked episode. Uh, we've got one of our own, uh, Black Hills InfoSecs, teaching an awesome training course called Advanced Testing, Evaluating, and Breaking of Security Software at Black Hat Asia this year. That's going to be in March of uh, 2016, so uh, check out the link in the show notes and go sign up for it because it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a great course. Um, and uh, if you want to check out more Hack Naked, check out hacknaked.tv. Uh, we've got the show wiki at uh, wiki.securityweekly.com. Um, I'm going to be speaking at SANS 2016 in Orlando on uh, uh, March 16th at 8.15 on C2 and Pivoting. Um, we've got B-Sides Orlando coming up. So go if you want to sponsor it, go sponsor it. If you want to go talk, uh, it's, it's March 12th through 13th. Send in a CFP. Um, <clears throat> you can email me at the show at hacknaked.tv, and I'm on Twitter at DAFTAC. Have a great weekend.